Hey ladies, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be responding to a post that I saw on Facebook and I'm going to read the post and then I'm going to get into it. Woman says she will only date men raised in a two-parent household. I can't date a man raised by his mother. All right, so that's the post in a nutshell. And the last sentence is really like, I just feel like there, there might be some context missing here in the last sentence. Like, I can't date a man raised by his mother. Um, so would you date a man that is raised by his grandmother? Would you date a man that was raised by wolves? Um, I have some questions, but I think this could be not, not a gra gramma grammatical issue. I just think that she should have said, I can't date a man raised by a single mother. I think that's what she should have said, but you know, I think we have enough context here to figure out what she was really trying to say. Okay, so let's get into it. I have said this to you ladies years ago. And when I said it years ago, people were so mad. Listen, people got in their feelings. When I tell you people got in their feelings, they got in their feelings. I just think it's so interesting because all these movements that we have going on here on the internet, like the femininity movement, the sprinkle sprinkle movement. I have been talking about this stuff years ago. I remember back in 2012, I had a blog that was called The Feminine Black Woman. And everything the girlies are talking about now, I was already talking about that stuff. Like my biggest regret was deleting that blog. I have some followers that remember that blog. And I'm like, wow, at least some people, you know, remember that that blog existed. But anyways, enough about me. Let's go back to the topic at hand. The concept of dating only men that came from two parents' household. When I said that, you know, you shouldn't date a man that came from a broken home. And by broken home, it could be a home where his daddy lives. Like his daddy lives in his home. If his father lives in the home, both parents live in the home, but the home is toxic. Like maybe the dad is an alcoholic or something like that. You, you don't want to date someone like that because men that are, that are emotionally damaged are going to drag you down. Because instead of doing the inner work and healing themselves, they don't they don't do that. They always look for external healing. You know, it's always external. They always look for external healing, external external validation. Men are not metaphysical by nature. They don't typically have a, a metaphysical mindset. You know, they're not very spiritual by nature. I said in my metaphysical tier on, on my Patreon that men are of the 3D. And if you are in the spiritual community, you know what the, the 3D means. If you don't know what it means, then, you know, don't worry about it because, you know, it's not that important for the topic, you know. So, you know, just let it, just let it fly, right? But anyways, most men don't do inner work. They just go through life and they try to use women and they, they want us to heal them when in reality no one can heal you you can only heal yourself if you're not doing the inner work you are just going to keep repeating the same karmic mistakes over and over until the lesson is eventually learned now i remember when i said that again like i said people were really really upset people were offended and the women that were offended were the single mothers now i did not say this to offend single mothers because a lot of my followers are in fact single mothers. The reason why I'm talking about this is because I'm talking about breaking generational curses, breaking generational patterns, right? And we all know that we have a single mother problem, particularly in the Black community, all right? So if you are of Caribbean descent or African-American descent, you know that there is an issue with single motherhood in the black community let's not pretend that it's not a problem it is in fact a problem and i invite women you know to to break those generational curses those negative generational patterns yeah i encourage women to to break those generational patterns and breaking generational patterns means that you know you stop repeating these negative patterns that is neg negatively affecting the community if you a curse breaker a pattern breaker in your family or in your community, you will get a lot of pushback. People will get so angry with you because you you trigger them. We all know the black sheep in the family and we know how the family treats them. We know how these people are treated in their communities. They're not treated very well. All right. We know this because people like what's familiar. 
even though what's familiar can be toxic and it's not good for us. People, people like what's familiar because it makes them comfortable and most people do not like to be outside of their comfort zone. Black women saying that they're not going to date men that came from a single parent home is very triggering to the Black community because this is a generational pattern or a generational curse that the Black community is dealing with right now. And of course, the devil, and I hate to say the devil, but I do not know what other word or term to use in this, you know, to um to drive this point across. The devil don't want you to break these generational curses. This is why you're going to get a lot of resistance from people in your community and people in your family. Because trust and believe, there are a lot of hurt people under that post. Girl, when I tell you, the men are hurt, the men are in their feelings, women are in their feelings, but you know, most of the people that are hurt and bothered about this post are the men, okay? Like yo, the comment section under this post is in absolute shambles. People are foaming at the mouth under that comment section. And of course, you know, it's, it's all emotional, right? Yeah, men like to say that they are the logical ones and the rational ones and women are the emotional ones. But, you know, ladies, let's be real. Men are very, very emotional. And just because men are allowed to express anger, that doesn't mean that it's not emotional because anger is an emotion. Men are very emotional. And we know this because, you know, in our book club on my Patreon, we read The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene, which is a really good book and I highly recommend it. And he basically said that, you know, men are not rational. Men are very emotional. Our markets, our economy is driven by emotions. That is what drives our economy, etc. Human beings are very emotional. Human beings are not rational at all. As long as we, we get this out of the way, because I am sick and tired of men lying to us, telling us that they are so logical and rational, when in reality, it's far from it. They are not rational at all. Anyways, let's dissect this post, right? This woman, I do not know if she knows what she's doing, because at the end of the day, I hope that she understands that just because a man grew up with both his parents, that does not mean that he's going to be a good boyfriend or a good husband. Like that does not mean he's a good candidate for relationship. It's more than just not dating men that grew up in a single parent home. It's more to it than that. It's not as simple because there are men that are absolute psychopaths that grew up with both parents. I mean, we've all heard these crazy stories of people unaliving their parents and the majority of them were of course men we've all heard these stories at the end of the day just because someone has both their parents or grew up in the same house with both their parents that does not mean that they're going to make a good husband okay so as long as we understand this because i don't want women running around asking men did you grow up with both parents blah 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 because when i said it at the time I I knew why I was saying it, but now that I look back, I can see that there are nuances that we'll never discuss, all right? For example, there are men that grew up with just their mo mother and they grew up fine. They turned out to be really good men. And of course, we do not know why they grew up with just their mother because at the end of the day, the mother could have been married to the father. The father could have passed away. You do not know what can happen. And again... I understand why she's saying this because a lot of men that grew up with single mothers turn out to be very bad, absolute menaces to society. The majority of prisoners in prison, as we all know, are men. And the majority of them come from broken homes, let's say broken homes. And if they are black, the majority of them came from a home where they were raised by a single mother. We know this. This is a fact. You can go and look it up and you can go read the statistics if you want. This has been proven. So there is no point in arguing and denying that this is not a fact. It is. However, you know, there are outliers, okay? And the reason why I'm talking about these outliers or I'm bringing up these ex exceptions is because I don't want women to, to start running around only dating men that... Come from, a, come from a two-parent home thinking that 
they're going to be a good boyfriend or a good husband, right? And you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to avoid saying boyfriend and I'm just going to stick to the word husband because if you are on this channel, you are dating for marriage, all right? Well, I, at least I hope so. Vetting men is a lot easier than we think it is. We don't have to make it complicated. It doesn't have to be complicated, vetting men. The best advice I can give a woman is to work on herself. Once you work on becoming the best version of yourself, meaning that you're doing the inner work, you heal, because there are a lot of unhealed people running around, especially in the Black community. I'll make a video about that on my metaphysical tear on, on Patreon. So, you know, if you're interested, you know, look out for that. But there are a lot of unhealed people in the Black community, people that dealing with their own demons and, you know, struggling to break generational curses, yeah? Not dating men that grow up in a single mother home or single parent home. That in itself, you know, it makes sense for women that are trying to break that cycle. You know, the cycle of the baby mama, mama drama cycle, etc. You know, like, you know, it's very toxic, you know, and we need to break that cycle as a people. We need to. However, you got to understand that just because a man grows up in a two-parent home, that does not mean that he is a good person. So going back to working on, on ourselves, you've got to work on yourself and become the best version of yourself. And when you become the best version of yourself, you have no choice but to attract the best. It's that simple and it's so difficult for people to grasp. I understand because if you're coming from your wounded self, you're not going to understand this. To simplify this and uncomplicate this, let's talk about you as a woman and your role when it comes to vetting men and dating. As a woman, you cannot date from a place of fear. You cannot date or enter relationships from a place of scarcity mindset. That is the biggest problem that I see a lot of women dealing with in terms of dating. All right. So um, I'm going to talk about fear and then I'm going to touch on scarcity mindset. Dating from a place of fear. A lot of people are afraid of being alone. And a lot of people are afraid of, of dying alone. Some people are afraid of not being loved. A lot of people are afraid of a lot of things. That's the kind of energy that they bring with them when they decide to start dating, right? A lot of people are so afraid that they, they walk around with this desperate energy. Dating from a place of desperation or fear is not going to end well for you. I promise you it is not going to end well for you. Because if you're dating from a place of scarcity and desperation, because, oh, you want a man and you don't want to be alone, and oh my God, my biological clock is ticking. If that is your motivation for dating, then something is wrong. You need to give dating a break and work on yourself. That is the worst state of, of mind. Like that, that, that is the worst state of consciousness for someone to be in when they're out there dating. Because all you're going to attract is a lot of predators and people that are going to take absolute advantage of you because your ass is desperate. If you decide that you're going to only date men that come from two-parent home, but you're still desperate, you're still a pick-me, you still put men on a pedestal, you still love men more than you love yourself, it's still not going to end well with you because guess what? You are going to attract that one nigga that grew up with his both parents that happens to be a psychopath. See where I'm going with this? This is the reason why you have to work on yourself and stop dating from a place of fear and desperation and loneliness or whatever reason you're out here looking for a man because people date for some weird reason, okay? And even dating for money is also coming from a, a place of pain. One of the things that I address early on in my message to you ladies is addressing financial desperation, because if you're financially desperate, the kind of uh, dating information, well, the type of dating advice that is going to resonate with you are the advice where people are telling you to get the bar by any means necessary, even if it means dating a 70-year-old man. That is the type of advice that is going to resonate with you because you are financially desperate and you are looking for someone to save you from all your bad financial, financial decisions, okay? Because why are you financially des desperate? Why are you financially desperate? Why are you broke? Why are you a grown woman and you're broke? Why are you out here getting evicted? Like what's going on? What's going on? And of course, I know that, you know, if you grow up in poverty, that 
you know, it does set you back. But at the same time, we are all responsible for our lives and our finances because we are all adults. So dating out of financial desperation is going to have you dating men with money and overlooking red flags, like major red flags and really bad qualities simply because the nigga has money, right? So at the end of the day, this is one of the reasons why I focus so much on women working on themselves, you know, working on your self-esteem, working on your self-worth, working on your self-love. So when you go out there and date, you know how to vet men, okay? You would know that a man growing up with both parents doesn't necessarily make him a good man or a good candidate to date. You know this, because a man could grow up in a home where his mother is being abused. He can grow up in a home like that. Do you want to date someone like that? Do you want to date someone who grows up in a, in a home watching his dad beat on his mom at every given opportunity? I would hope that you would not because that is not um, a good environment for someone to grow up in. That's actually a very toxic environment. And if you are trying to date men that are well-rounded, emotionally intelligent and are overall good quality men for dating and relationship and marriage the last thing you want to do is to get involved in a man that comes from a home where his mother was being abused his mother was being overlooked taken taken for granted you don't want to date a man like that because he's going to expect you to live a similar life as his mother's and listen he is going to do exactly what his daddy did He's going to, he might put his hands on you or he might take you for granted and ignore you. I know women that are married to men that hate them. I know people who have fathers that don't even like their mothers and they're still married and they still live together. So I'm telling you, like, I know so many men that grew up with both parents and they all messed up, all fucked up in the head. Some of them even go to prison. I know men like that. So at the end of the day, a man growing up with both parents doesn't guarantee that that man is worth your time at the end of the day. I get where she's coming from. And I, I, I myself had said it, but, you know, I said this years ago. And of course, you know, people were offended. And I get it. Okay, I get it. At the end of the day, we have to figure out, you know, I mean, it, I mean, this is easier said than done, right? It, we have to figure out, um, you know, a good way to vet men. But there's no way of knowing because at the end of the day, you attract what you are a vibrational match for. So at the end of the day, if you're unhealed and you're still dealing with low self-esteem, low self-worth, scarcity mindset, you still did out of a out of a place of fear, this is not gonna work for you. It's not gonna work. All right. So Shira said in a in a video, I saw a clip of uh, a video where Shira was basically saying that you would never have to heal again if you do, if you do this. All you have to do is have some standards, maintain those standards. And you'll never, ever, you know, have to heal again. And that is pretty good advice. But the best advice I can give you today is work on your fear. A couple of years ago on my Patreon, I did a video, an event where I talked about the six basic human fears. And I really break it down for you, for you ladies. And a lot of the women that attended that event, they said that it was very, very helpful. And that event is still available for you to watch on my Patreon. So you can go in there and watch how to overcome the six basic human fears because I've worked on those fears. I've worked on myself and I do not have, I do not struggle with any of those fears at all because I've really worked on myself. What you need to do, you need to work on your fear. You have to work on your scarcity mindset. You have to work on your self-love because self-love is very important because somebody who loves themselves is not going to be dating bums or dating broken men or unhealed men, wounded men. Work on your self-love, work on your fear, work on overcoming your fears, your fear of being alone, your fear of being broke, your fear of dying alone with cats, like all, all of that stuff is fear, okay? Your fear of your family not accepting you because... You couldn't find a man to marry you. All of that stuff, you have to work on that fear. So once you are dating from a place of empowerment, and once you're dating from, you know, once, you, once you're dating as a healed person, a healed individual, someone that actually did the work and work on themselves, 
dating is going to be a lot easier for you. And you wouldn't have to come on the internet and say things like this. You know, you wouldn't have to come on here and say, oh, I'm not dating men that don't grow up on two-parent household. Because it sounds good in theory, but at the end of the day, women that are still struggling with self-love, women that lack discernment, women that are not in touch with their intuition, this is not going to help those women. What these women need to do is work on themselves. This video is a lot longer than I anticipated. Like I said, this sounds great in theory. However, if you still have issues with yourself, you still have daddy issues, you still wounded, you still dating narcissists or whatnot, this is not going to work, all right? I hope that I get my point across and I hope you ladies understand where I'm coming from. At the end of the day, there are so many dating tips and advice that you can get out there because there is a lot. Trust me, there is a lot. However, the most important thing that you have to work on is your is yourself and your mindset. You have to work on your mindset and you have to work on your self-love. Most of our problems in life, especially in relationships, stem from a place of self-hate, right? A lot of us do not love ourselves. And this is how this is how you would know, right? Just ask yourself. You see someone in, let's say, in an abusive situation. Okay, you see somebody who is dating a man who is driving her car, living in her, in her house for free, cheating on her behind her back. You know, every Monday morning, she's fighting some bitch that is fucking with her man, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. Okay, because, you know, I'm using this analogy. And she keeps taking him back, always forgiving him, always giving him chances. Everyone is looking at her crazy and everyone is saying like, girl, what the, what the F is wrong with you? Okay, so people are seeing that there's definitely something wrong. So the question that you are going to ask in this situation is, would someone who loved themselves put up with this? And you already know what the answer is. So most of our problem, most of our problem stem from a place of lack of self-love and fear. So that's all I have to say. Thanks for listening.